Hi guys, welcome to our video for 10.1, the mole, a measurement of matter. So we, we've talked a lot about different kinds of matter this year, and we haven't really talked much about measurement of it, except for the kind of intro stuff we did back in September. So now we're going to get into really dealing with measuring matter and how we measure stuff with chemical formulas and the like. So matter can be measured in three different ways. Uh, one way that you can do it is by count, right? Uh, you could count molecules, you could count atoms, but to actually count individual ones would be way, way too much. You know, kind of like if you go to the store and buy eggs, you're not going to buy one egg, two eggs, you buy them by the dozen. So what we're going to talk about in a little bit is how the mole is the chemist's dozen. So for counting things, we're going to end up using moles instead of actual numbers of atoms or molecules or whatnot. Another way that matter can be measured is the mass and that we use grams for mass. Uh, kind of like, you know, you go to the store, you're going to buy some ham, you'll get a pound of ham, a pound and a half. You're not actually buying it by the slice. And another way that we can use to measure matter is by volume. You know, if you're going to buy soda, you're not going to buy it by the sip. Huh? You're going to usually buy a two-liter bottle of it. So we, for volume, we're going to be using liters. All right, here we go with the mole. I like to think of the mole as being the chemist's dozen. Like normally, right, one dozen. Oh, let me fix this here. Normally one dozen of something would be 12. Have you ever heard the term the baker's dozen? All right, there's a little bit of a history to it where way, way, way back in the day, if a uh, baker shortchanged people with what they were selling them, that they could actually be prosecuted. So bakers would generally give you, if you ordered a dozen of something, they would give you 13 this way, if something went wrong and they miscounted or whatnot, at the very least, you would have that 12 and they would be safe. So even still today, if you buy a baker's dozen of something, you will get 13. I like to think of the mole as the chemist's dozen. Now, it's a lot more than 12 or 13, but the concept is kind of the same. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That's a really, really, really big number. Six. Zero, two, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So this, as you can see, is a huge, kind of incomprehensible number. So we're gonna deal with counting out little particles and doing some math with this in a bit, but for the most part, we're just going to use it as a mole. And that could be, since it's particles, it could be atoms, molecules, or compounds, right? So like a single hydrogen atom, if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those, that will be a mole of hydrogen. For water molecules, if we had... 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these, that would be a mole of water molecules. Okay, This number here is what's called Avogadro's number. All right, uh, It's not something that you're necessarily going to have to memorize, but you just have to know that 6.02 times 10 to the that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is Avogadro's number. Okay, so there's actual conversions to be done here. Okay, and you'll be asked questions like, how many water molecules are in two moles? So we're going to do this the same way we've always done. All right, so if we have two moles of H2O molecules, and we want to see how many molecules. 
We do what we've always done, what you want, molecules, over what you got, moles, okay? And the relationship is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules is equal to one mole. So we done, we do what we've always done, we plug our numbers in, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per one mole, cancel out the moles, and now we're going to multiply 6 times this, and we get 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd, or 1.204 times 10 to the 24th, okay? Pretty straightforward kind of stuff. If we want to go the other way, how many moles are in 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd CO2 molecules. So we want to find how many moles. And like always, you do what you want. Moles over what you got. Molecules. And we plug in. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole, cancel, cancel, and we end up with 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And if we plug this into our handy dandy calculator, 1.25 divided by 6.02 and that's going to equal 0 0.208 we'll stick with so we got 0 0.208 0 0.208 moles of carbon dioxide is what 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd would have been. Okay, finally, the mole mass relationship. And this is one of the simplest, well, more complicated yet simplest things that we're going to talk about. Crucial to understand this. The atomic mass of an element expressed in grams is the mass of one mole of that element. What the heck does that mean? So if you look on our reference table, right, carbon, the mass of carbon is, says 12.011 AMU. Well, it says 12.011, and that means a single carbon atom has a mass of 12.011 AMU. So a mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams. It's a straight relationship. So since whatever something's AMU mass is, or whatever its molar mass is, one mole of that has a mass of that number in grams. So if you look on your reference table and see oxygen has a mass of 15.9994, that means one mole of oxygen atoms has a mass of 15.994 grams. If helium has a mass of 4 point something 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 AMU, that means one mole of helium has a mass of four grams. Okay, so the atomic mass of a compound or molecule expressed in grams is the mass of one mole of that compound or molecule, just like I told you here. So let's do uh, an example. Water, right? Water is H2O. So it has two hydrogens okay, which have a mass of 1.00794 each for a total of 2.01588 grams. Our one oxygen has a mass of 15.9994, and there's one of them, so it's just 15.9994, we add them up, 
and we're going to get our total mass of a mole of water molecules is going to equal 18.01528 grams. All right, one more. Carbon dioxide. All right, so carbon has a mass of 12.011. Oxygen has a mass of 15.9994, both in grams. However, there's two oxygens, so we've got to multiply that by two, and we get 31.9988. So to get for our whole CO2, we add our 12.011 to 31.9988, and we get the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide as 44.0098. But to the correct number of significant figures, we're allowed three after the decimal, and that becomes 44.010. All right, well, we're going to practice some more of these in class, as always. If you need to go back and review anything, feel free to do so, and I'll see you at school.